It's confession time. The new epic battles, pike and shot, Scottish starters are the first ones I haven't pre-ordered and bought through Warlord Games. I've just got so much of the stuff from the three games they've already released. I just couldn't justify it to myself, but I still really wanted to paint something. So I grabbed a copy of the War Games Illustrated with the free frame so I could do it. They are really cool. Both starter sets look fantastic. Normally I'd be reviewing them and unboxing them. If you've watched the channel for a while, maybe you've even expected it, but I just couldn't do it. I am tempted by the Montrose Royalist starter set. It's a bit of a smaller starter set. I think now if I had my time again and didn't buy the original Pike and Shot starter, this would have been a really nice way into the period. It's a much more accessible way in. And I may well treat myself at some point and pick it up because it does look like a nice way of building a small but nicely rounded epic starter set. I really love those Highlanders as well. They look absolutely fantastic. So with that in mind, I decided to paint my free frame as Montrose Royalists and use the studio scheme here as a bit of a guide. So for this tutorial, I'm just going to paint one strip. I've decided to go for a regular strip rather than a strip with the officers on there. I figured this would be one of the easiest way to demonstrate the techniques that I use. For long-term watchers of the channel, you'll have seen much of this before, but I like to prime my miniatures black in most cases. And then I move on to what is really an underpainting stage. I call it a zenith or highlight with the airbrush, but essentially what I'm doing is adding quite a heavy layer of white, mostly top down, but quite a lot to the sides as well. So we end up with a grayscale miniature with a little bit of darkness left from the black in the undercuts and shadows underneath. I finished this off with a dry brush as well to really pick out the detail. Um, the reason for doing this is I like to base coat my miniatures using contrast paint, army paint of speed paint, Vallejo Express color, and all of those kind of new ranges of ready-made glazes. I'm going to start off with the skin, and this is Vallejo Express Colour Dwarf Skin. It's, maybe it's supposed to be Dwarf, but there's definitely no R in the spelling there. And what I'm doing here is applying this fairly liberally to all of their faces. And you'll see that I also paint their hands, which is a total mistake because they're wearing gloves. So I have to go back and rectify that afterwards. So, so don't do that bit. Now, moving on to the hair, I'm using Gore Grunt Fur. Nasdrag yellow and Saigor brown and what I do with this I open all the pots up careful not to knock them over and I just work my way down the strip of miniatures most of the visible hair is on the back but when you do turn the miniatures round afterwards to make sure that you're doing the fronts or the sides as well just make sure you match up the right hair color with the right man you don't want blonde hair around the back and a, and a black mustache or something like that for their hats, I turn to Vallejo Express Colour Mystic Blue. This is quite light, so I did do a couple of thin coats, but it did still leave a little bit of that natural highlight you get from working this way with these glaze style paints. Our serum in blue from the Contrast range by Citadel will be a really good alternative for this. Now sticking with blue, we're on Vallejo Express colour still as well, and this is Omega Blue, and I'm using this on some of the trousers. What I'm doing here is starting a few spot colours. There is a main colour to this, almost a uniform type colour, but I want a couple of the sets of trousers to stand out, and blue is one of those spot colours. Continuing those spot colours, we're using hardened leather from Army Painter Speed Paint and working the same way. And just like with the hair, make sure when you flip the stand round that you're painting the right corresponding back of the miniature with the same colour so you don't get any two-tone trousers going on. Now with those spot colours out of the way, we're turning to Wasteland Brown from Vallejo Express Colour. This is a, a mustardy type of brownish leather, perfect for tan. And we've got quite a bit of tan on some of these miniatures. So you're looking at the leather cross straps and belts, and some of them have leather jerkins as well. You'll also find that there are bits that you can use on their gloves and socks. So working my way along the strip, adding this same colour to all of the socks on the miniatures. And then on to the gloves, which I'd previously painted in the flesh colour and had to paint back over with a white again. 
Now, for the main uniform colour, I'm using three parts Gravelord Grey and one part Dark Wood, all from Army Painter Speed Paints. And I wanted a very sort of charcoal browny grey colour for the uniform. And if you look to that original picture from the Warlord Games studio paint job, there's this lovely kind of brownish grey on there, almost like a, a grey woolen uniform, which is, I imagine, what this is. But I didn't have anything that matched that range. But by mixing those two colours, it just adds enough of the brown tone in there to, to make it work and this will essentially fill in most of the rest of the unpainted miniature being the uniform for these guys it's worth taking your time and trying to keep it away from the white areas these paints perform so much better when they're painted over a, a white or a grayscale miniature you really get the best out of them they flow into all the gaps giving you some natural shadow and the highlight areas either work as highlights by themselves or they give you an outline from which to highlight from later on now turning to trusty contrast black legion this has a brownish tone to it but it is still a black color i'm using this on all of their boots and you could have some tan colored shoes as well but based on the yellows tones that i've already used the yellow ochre tones on the socks and things i thought that would blend in a little bit too much we also decided to use this for a couple of cross belts now on the studio paint scheme they are all tan but because we have a couple of tan looking leather jerkins and, and gloves and things i wanted to use the odd separate color just so it stood out a little bit more these chaps all have swords and i use the same black brown color here for the scabbards and when I was done there, I went back to the Wasteland Brown and filled out the rest of the remaining tan cross belts and leather. Now to contrast Garagax Sewer, one of my favourites. I'm using this on all the wooden areas, which in this case is the shafts of the pikes and the handle of the poleaxe. Now, much like the hair, I'm using three colours at once. We have Lizard Green, we have Velvet Red, and we have Omega Blue. And the idea here is to use them on the small areas of tartan that these miniatures have. Work my way down, adding the different colours on, so we have a little bit of variety based into the unit. Some of them have much more showing round the back than they do on the front, so be careful not to miss those out. Now we're going to scale colours, metal range, and we have black metal, which is the perfect base for all the metallic areas on the miniatures. So you have some large belt buckles showing on the fronts of the miniatures. Then, of course, the more obvious metal end to the poleaxe and the tips to all the pikes. And that's a full base coat and absolutely gameable. And this will be more than enough for most people, especially with miniatures so small. But we are going to crack on and highlight further. While I have your attention, just before we start the highlights, I have recently started a Patreon. If you'd like to support the channel, that's a fantastic way of doing so. There's a link in the video description, so please do go and have a look if you'd like to support the channel. In addition to that, I've also launched a Patreon, a place where we can all go and discuss things in a little bit more detail than we can do in the comments on the videos. That is open to non-patrons as well as patrons. Patrons get a little bit extra access. To start off, we're turning to scale 75s, so a scale colour, rainy grey, and to me this has a slightly earthy tone to it, and it's the perfect highlight for all those sort of wooden grey areas. Very, very thin lines here, just picking out the tops of the folds in the trousers and on the edges of the jackets. And then turning the strip round and making sure you're doing the, the same on the back as well, and this just helps the miniatures stand out and pop a little bit more. Now to model colour green ochre and we're going to be using this to add similar kinds of highlights to all the tan areas. So around the bottoms of the leather jackets, just pick them out and make them pop a little bit. Some of the higher areas on the gloves and the socks, etc, etc. You don't have to pick up every detail here or spend ages highlighting such small miniatures, but just picking out the odd raised cuff area, the tops of the knuckle here and there really makes them stand out. As something as simple as a couple of lines on each of the socks really makes a difference. Sticking with model colour, we're going to light brown, and this is an orangish colour, and we're going to be using that on a couple of those spot colour pairs of trousers that we went for. Continuing with that method, we're using the royal blue for the blue trousers. Now, this is a scale 75 fantasy and games range. We have jewelry old in turquoise, and that's a much lighter blue, and I'm using that to highlight the hats. And a touch of model colour flat earth just to add a subtle highlight to the shafts of the pikes. 
Now to make those bits of tartan look something like tartan. So we have royal blue from model colour, I have Avalanche Sunset from Citadel, and then also Evil Sun Scarlet, also from Citadel colour. Now, of course, we're not painting proper tartan on here. We're just doing something to make it resemble it. So what I'm going to do here is work my way along and just paint some neat lines in the same direction all the way around on each piece of tartan. For this red one, I've chosen yellow. For the blue one, I've put red lines on. And for the green one, I've added the blue. Turning to a phalanx yellow from Citadel Colour and white grey from Model Colour, I'm just adding a few lines in the opposite direction. Now you have folds here, so you can't do it as neatly as you could in the first direction. So these are more just little marks, just to give you an idea of some lines going in the opposite direction. It's really just to create an effect that tricks the eye. Don't forget to do the backs as well, especially with those larger areas of tartan showing. And while I had the white grey on my palette, I used it to paint on the saltaires that show on a few of the blue hats as well. At the same time, you can pick out this chap's white shirt that's showing a little bit on the front and the back. And then add a little highlight to the white bits showing around the tops of the socks on some of the miniatures. Now turning to some model colour basic skin tone here and all I'm doing is just adding a little bit to the bridge of the nose and the tops of the cheekbones, maybe the chin if there's not any hair on it and it just really makes the faces stand out that little bit more. The method with the dwarf skin from Vallejo Express Colour or any of the contrast style skin paints will do a, a very good job over a white or over a grayscale miniature of, of shading and highlighting anyway but this just makes them stand out a little bit more and makes them not quite so washed out. Finishing off now with a little bit of game air silver just to highlight the top of the pole axe and the tops of the pikes. There we have it, one tabletop strip of a Scots pike and shot. I think they look pretty cool. Definitely look great with lots and lots more of their friends on the tabletop for a mass effect. You can go a lot more simple than this as well. Just stick with the, the basic contrast style tones over the top, or you can paint in a more traditional way. But I wanted to sort of break down the tutorial, as I often do, to show you the different stages so you can add or, or leave as much detail as you wish. I really enjoyed doing these. It was nice to paint some epic miniatures again. It's been a, a month or so since I've last had the chance to do so. And it really does tempt me to go and pick up that Montrose starter box. However, I am going to be sensible. I have many, many projects on the go and I can't buy an army every time Warlord Games releases a new starter box. I do, however, plan to keep producing painting tutorials for these miniatures as and when they come out, regardless of whether I'm collecting or have purchased that later army box. It's something I've covered a lot on the channel and I want to keep doing so and I enjoy painting things even if I'm not painting an army. I hope you've enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you are new to the channel, do please do check out all the other videos there. Lots of Epic Battles stuff is covered, along with many other games and systems, so it's well worth having a little nose around. As mentioned earlier, I do have a Patreon, so if you'd like to support the channel, it's a great way of doing it. There's multiple levels on there, from the basic support all the way up to the top where you get painting tuition. There's also free dice involved with some of the tiers. But time to let you go. Thank you very much for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you soon.